Okay, so Sam from Six Hour and I did, uh, we studied the seabed coefficient. There was no smart. Um, okay, and we used this thing called the thermocouple. And um, we used a type K, which is, that has to do with type, the type of metals that are in it. And then um, the difference, so this thing, here, I'll go to the next thing. This thing, um, so this is the thermocouple, and then each wire is in a different temperature of water, and then this one's hot, and this one's cold, and that's cr that creates a voltage, which is what the C-by coefficient me measures. Um, and so this is the equation for it. So there are two junctions on the thermocouple, which is where the wires meet, and then it's comparing the temperature and the voltage of each one. Um, and then our temperature was that, I mean, our hypothesis was that if the temperature increases, the C-by coefficient will increase. And then, yeah, that's, so this one is the um, junction two, and that's in hot water, and this one's junction one, and that's in cold water. And that's just it. And we put voltmeters on each side of the junction so we can measure the voltage in each one. Yeah, this is a, these are our graphs for run one, and um, this one's the temperature of it, and then this one's the voltage of each junction. And um, if we thought it was weird or kind of interesting that it kind of stays like this much voltage between the two of them for each one. Um, and then we didn't know why it does that. And then that's, we did another one and we just kept letting the temperature increase um, to see if it's different at all at like lower temperatures and higher temperatures. Um, and then, so for these, we just did it more up close of like, right here since it doesn't have this weird part. And um, this is the seabed coefficient during t versus temperature. And this, um, so as temperature increases, the seabed coefficient did increase for this one. Um, oh, and that's run two, and then run one is this one. And we found in a lot of our data that the data for run one wasn't like, didn't show as many relationships as the data for run two. So, um, we didn't know if that was because maybe at higher temperatures, it just, it gets less, like, weird. Um, oh, and then whenever we compared the voltages between the two junctions on the graph, we got a really nice relationship here, and we didn't know what that meant, but the slopes are both um, about negative 3.1, so uh, that looks like it would be, like, some sort of constant or something which may explain why this happens. And then this is voltage versus temperature, which looks a lot like the graphs. Um, coefficient does have a lot to do with the temperature, which is obvious sort of because it's in the equation, but this just sort of shows it graphically how that happens. Um, and then that's for two. And our error was pretty um, bad, but we think that's mostly because the voltmeters that we used weren't as specific, like they didn't, they didn't, they weren't able to measure a small enough voltage for the voltage produced between the two temperatures. Um, but we concluded that our hypothesis was right even though our air might not have been, or our data might not have been sufficient. Um, but we concluded that mostly because of this graph here. Um, yeah. Questions about the CBEC coefficient? I was uh, overwhelmed by your presentation because I know nothing about the system at all. I, I think it was really brave of you to study something so esoteric. Yeah, I was pretty overwhelmed too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.